These are the big screen endings that left us feeling a little empty inside. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 anticlimactic movie endings. For this list, we're looking at movies, both good and bad, that ended with a resounding meh. You gotta be kidding me, right? Instead of the blockbuster conclusion we were expecting. We are also excluding Fantastic Four because it was all bad, from beginning to end. We're not remotely all in agreement. We don't need you or anybody else to keep an eye on us. So it didn't really have the chance to be anticlimactic. Oh, and needless to say, a spoiler alert is now in effect. He did it. He saved us. He saved us. Number 10, Eyes Wide Shut. You couldn't get in anyway in those clothes. Why not? There's a poignant sense of danger throughout this erotic but disturbing drama. Tom Cruise finds himself pursued by members of an unknown society after he witnesses a quasi-religious orgy and is subsequently exposed. When a promise has been made here, there is no turning back. Audiences were left wondering who this group was, who was behind the masks, and just how much power they really had. If I told you their names, I'm not going to tell you their names, but if I did, I don't think you'd sleep so well. But the disappointing denouement goes a little something like this. The mystery is never unraveled, and Tom Cruise is left free to continue his marriage without consequence. <laughs> I'll tell you everything. While there is still a sense of eeriness to the finale, we would have liked to see director Stanley Kubrick hold nothing back in what was tragically his last outing. We're awake now. Number nine, next. Man, if you could just be quiet and do exactly what I say, I'll save your life. Unlike a lot of recent films starring the king of internet memes, the premise and buildup of this action flick are fairly solid. Step back. It's his gun. He was going to shoot two people. Able to see branching futures, Nicolas Cage finds himself roped into a government task force in order to stop a nuclear bomb from going off, while also pursuing the woman of his dreams. Precognition and the altering of time can be tricky subjects to handle in films, because they can either come off as clever or really, really lazy. You see the future. My future. What will affect me in only two minutes ahead. Unfortunately, the filmmakers decided to take the easy route, by having the second half just be another possible future that Cage witnesses in a vision, after his character spends the night with Jessica Biel in a motel. Come back to bed. We gotta go. Number 8. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King Now come the days of the king. Now, before you throw us into the fiery pits of Mount Doom, hear us out. The Return of the King is an exceptional film in every sense, but everyone at one point or another has been in agreement that the film's multitude of endings sort of dampen the sheer thrill of finally seeing the One Ring destroyed. I'm glad to be with you, Samwise Gamgee. We have the Fellowship reunited, we have Aragorn's coronation, we have the return to the Shire, we have the tearful goodbyes at the harbor, and finally we have Sam and his family. We understand that all loose ends need to be tied up, but it's not so much an ending as it is a marathon. I'm back. Number 7. The Village You live in there? I do, sir. Many moviegoers argue over when exactly M. Night Shyamalan suffered his fall from grace. One such view is that it began with the out-of-nowhere ending to this not-so-supernatural mystery. You have kindness in your voice. I did not expect that. While there had been a mild sense of suspense as to what was haunting the residents of a supposed 19th century village, the actual reveal left audiences scratching their heads in disappointment. It's a really easy gig, Kevin. Maintain and protect the border. That's it. Turns out, the only thing this village had to fear was stepping into modern-day society. Ivy has returned with medicines from the towns. She was attacked by a creature and killed it. We know how much Shyamalan loves his twists, but this one certainly lacked impact. Where are you from? The what? Number 6. Kill Bill Volume 2 I am gonna kill. Everybody was enthralled by the bride's blood-soaked revenge rampage, and we were all on the edge of our seats to see her finally clash with the man who stole her life. Was my reaction really that surprising? Yes, it was. While we were treated to a tense build-up featuring typical Tarantino dialogue between these two scorned lovers, 
the actual final fight is over in less than 30 seconds. You and I have unfinished business. While we're more than happy to see the five-point palm exploding heart technique finish Bill off, couldn't we have gotten a little more swordplay beforehand? The Ultimate Revenge should have at least had a few more sword swings. After all, the movie is called Kill Bill. You're not a bad person. You're a terrific person. Number 5. The Matrix Revolutions Why do you persist? Because I choose to. While the original Matrix was a household name with its amazing choreography and philosophy, the sequels just couldn't live up to it. Oh, no, no. No, it's not fair. If anything, they got a little too far up their own backside with how smart they were trying to be. Still, all fans were eager to see Neo take on an entire city filled with Agent Smiths in what looked like an epic finale to the third installment. The disappointment already rears its head when he has to fight only one of the Smiths. And it continues when Neo manages to save humanity by essentially sacrificing himself to turn the Matrix off and on again. The war is over! And as a result, achieves peace. It may be symbolic, but in some ways it was also unwarranted, and doesn't give the closure that most fans of the first film desire. Neo, wherever you are. Thank you. Number 4. The Hunger Games Mocking Jay Part 2. You're joking. Not in the slightest. Ever since Katniss Everdeen took her sister's place in the Hunger Games, we've been waiting for the day she finally gets even with President Snow and puts an end to the people's suffering. And we certainly got a resolution of sorts. When it's revealed that Coin is only a stone's throw away from Snow in terms of villainy, Katniss shoots her down as opposed to Snow, who is finally killed, but by an angry mob instead of the girl on fire. <laughs> The series ends on something of a melancholy note, as we see Katniss and Peeta with their children. We're all for Katniss getting a happy ending, but oddly enough, it felt so nonchalant for a series that had such grit. Did you have a nightmare? I have nightmares too. Number 3. I Am Legend What are you doing? The last man on Earth may not be alone. And neither are we in thinking that the finale of this blockbuster was certainly lackluster. They're not gonna stop. Stay until dawn. There are actually two endings to I Am Legend, one of which is the standard hero's sacrifice, which is rendered pointless by the fact that Will Smith could have just tossed the grenade as opposed to kamikazing a dark seeker. <laughs> The other ending takes on a far different tone, as it's revealed that the Dark Seekers are actually intelligent beings that are just looking out for their own. I'm sorry. <laughs> Knowing that an alternative conclusion exists makes it all the more disappointing that the filmmakers went with the standard Hollywood treatment. No, no. <laughs> Number two, no country for old men. Maybe I'll go riding. Okay. What do you think? Well, I can't plan your day. The Coen brothers are legendary for their unique approach to narrative and filmmaking in general. One of their most successful outings is this Academy Award winning tale of greed, conscience, and old age. How'd you sleep? I don't know. I had dreams. Well, you got time for them now. Anything interesting? After failing to capture the fearsome hitman Anton Chigurh, Tommy Lee Jones' aged lawman finally decides to retire and recounts two dreams he had about his father to his wife. It was about meeting him in town somewhere and he'd give me some money. While it does provide food for thought, and as always, Tommy Lee Jones manages to steal the scene. The second one, it was like we was both back in older times. We're still left wondering about Chigurh's fate and who is left to carry on the fight. I knew that whenever I got there, he'd be there. Then I woke up. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. It's miraculous. <laughs> I feel nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Number 1. 
Number one, War of the Worlds. While certain aspects of this Steven Spielberg sci-fi movie were enjoyable, like seeing the alien death machines cause havoc, no one can deny that its ending is the very definition of an anticlimax. Even if you get the voice of God himself, Morgan Freeman, to narrate how microbes defeated the alien insurgents, it still doesn't change the fact that bacteria defeated the alien insurgents. From the moment the invaders arrived, breathed our air, ate, and drank, they were doomed. We're glad that Tom Cruise could reconnect with his son and all, but we'd rather have seen humankind's valiant and desperate efforts to fight them off, as opposed to them waiting for the invaders to die from the sniffles. They were undone, destroyed, after all of man's weapons and devices had failed, by the tiniest creatures that God and his wisdom put upon this earth. Do you agree with our list? Yes. Which film do you think has the biggest anticlimax of all time? Take it out. You didn't see me. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.